In this video, I'm going to show you something that's a big trend right now in AI, and that's integrating an existing large language model, such as OpenAI's amazing GPT-4, into your own application, and tailoring the results to whatever use case you're building. To demonstrate that, I'll show you a simple product I built called Product Genie. And it takes some rough notes of a product you want to create and gives you back a product title and description. It does an amazing job, actually. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repo in the description of this video, so you can use the code as a starter for your own project. So let's start off with a quick demo. And then I'll jump into the code and show you how it works. All right, let's go. So this is Product Genie. I'm just running it locally right now. And the idea is you can just give it a really rough idea of a product you want to create. So I'm going to put in here craft beer, hoppy, Pacific Northwest hops. Click the button. It's going to go to the GPT-4 API and bring back a name of the product and a full product description. And it does a really good job. And we've set up this to do streaming. So this uses Vercel Edge functions and also uses the streaming option on the GPT-4 API. So I'll show you to do that when I get to the code. But it gives a really nice user experience to get the results back as it's coming in. If I use the GPT 3.5 Turbo uh, model, it comes back a lot faster. It comes back even faster than ChatGPT. But because I'm using the GPT 4 one, it, it's a little bit slower, but the results are really good. Like some of the marketing text it comes back with is just perfect. Like for example, our brewers have skillfully balanced the robust hop profile with a smooth multi backbone, providing a refreshing and satisfying finish. I mean, that's just perfect. So the application is written in Next.js, which if you don't know what that is, it's built on top of React. So if you think of React like a piece of cake. Next.js is like the icing on top. It just adds a lot of features like server-side rendering that's really handy for developers. And it utilizes Vercel Edge functions, which are a type of serverless function that gives a really nice user experience and they're really fast. So let's jump into the code and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so we're in VS Code and this isn't going to be a full coding tutorial. I just want to highlight the key sections of where we're interfacing with artificial intelligence, so where we're hitting the GPT-4 API. Let's start index.tsx, and that's where the simple user interface you saw in the demo is. We have some minimal state to find, just if, if the application is loading or not, and also to keep track of the user interface with the users typing into that box. And also what's returned from the GPT API, we keep that in a piece of state as well. So interesting thing starts happening where we have this prompt variable. And so what we're doing is we're taking a base prompt, and what it is is generate a product title, and then we put in brackets short and clever prefix with product title, in quotes, and product description, approximately 300 words, prefix with product description from this rough product description. And then we put in the user's input. And so together that forms the prompt that's gonna bring us back both the product title and the product description in one result from the GPT API. And the reason we have these two prefixes in the prompt for product title and product description is so GPT returns us in this format so we can parse it out later and display them in separate boxes for the user. But this way it's gonna be cheaper because you can bundle everything together in the one request. And in my testing, I actually haven't had any issues. It always returns it with these prefixes, so which is awesome. And then we have the generate AI title and description function, which is called when the user clicks that button. And this is where it calls the serverless function on the back end, which I'll show you how that works shortly. That general UI part is super simple. It's It uses Tailwind CSS for some basic styling. The interesting part is really when you get the response back from GPT and how you render that. So what it does is some kind of basic string manipulation, if you see down here. And it does some parsing where it looks for that AI title that comes back from GPT. It splits that apart from the description. And then it maps those to two separate div sections, which you see in the user interface where it's the two boxes, one for this title, one for the description. So let's take a look at the generate.ts file in the API folder. And one really nice thing about Next.js is you can just create TypeScript files in the API folder and it sets up that route for you. So in here, the way you set it up as a Vercel Edge function, you just put it in here in a config variable and you just said runtime to edge. That's all you have to do. And it's all set up to be a Vercel Edge function. Then the call to the open API, uh, GPT-4 API is all set up in here under this OpenAI stream payload. And the first thing it needs is the model. So I've, I've tested with both GPT-3.5 Turbo, which is the one used for chat GPT, and I've also used GPT-4. GPT-4 will be slower, it'd be more expensive. GPT-3.5 Turbo is much faster and it's way cheaper, but the results of GPT-4 are really good. Like much better. For an application like this, I would definitely use GPT-4. Other things are the temperature. So the temperature governs the randomness of the GPT model. And in doing so, it kind of influences the creativity of the responses. It has to be a number between zero and one. And so the higher the number, the closer to one it is, the more creative it gets, but also the more chance for errors. For writing like this, I think it should be higher. Like 0.7 seems to work pretty well for me. But you have to try this out with whatever your use case is and experiment a bit with this one. Another important one is the max tokens. So the way the API calculates how much a transaction costs is by 
tokens, not by characters. So by setting this, it basically gives you the max price that you have to pay for this transaction when you send it to GPT. And it will influence how, how big a response you get as well. So if you're writing like a book, for example, you want GPT to write you a book, you need to pass in a, a, a large max token number. And then stream, if that's a nice setting where it streams it back to the user and it kind of writes it as it comes back in. So it's really cool that the GPT API supports that. So you can kind of make it like chat GPT in your own application and it works really well. And then from there, we open a utility component that actually does a connection to OpenAI. Let's have a quick look at that one. And so here's where it calls the OpenAI API. And then we have to pass in our OpenAI API key. And you can just get that on the OpenAI website. Just be careful to upload this to GitHub, like in a public repository, just because that's all anyone needs and they could use your credits for it. But generally OpenAI has made these APIs really cheap. So I wouldn't let that hold you back. I've done like a lot of testing and a lot of different applications and I've only spent maybe five or 10 bucks in the whole time I've been doing this. But GPT-4 is a bit more expensive for sure. So that's the code at a high level. And OpenAI has done a great job of making their API really easy to use. And then combined with Next.js and the Vercel Edge functions, it just makes for a really smooth development process. So another alternative would be try to use a no code tool like bubble or something like that. What I find is you get to a certain point and you can't really customize it anymore. You're kind of just stuck in that box. So with this alternative, I think it gives you a lot more room to grow and make a really nice application. So let me show you how you deploy this to Vercel. You could probably deploy it to other places, but I find with Next.js, just deploying to Vercel is so seamless and so easy. So let me show you quickly how that works. So once you get your account set up on Vercel, and this will actually work on the hobby tier just fine, you can just say new project. And then you, this is where you can actually link up your GitHub account to Vercel. And so you can just give it permission to see all your repositories, even your private ones. And then from there, all you have to do is just click import, give your product a name, and then in the environment variable section, this is where you have to put in those environment variables that you would put in the .env file if you just deployed it locally. For this application, there's just two of them. There's, there's the API key from OpenAI, and there's also the model. And after that, just hit deploy, and it just works. Another nice thing is when you push your changes from local, from your local computer up to GitHub, it automatically does a redeploy. So you have the cloud version automatically deployed every time you do a major change. But yeah, that's it, pretty seamless. So where would we go from here? I guess it's really up to whatever your application you're building, but you'd probably wanna add in some user authentication so they could use their Google account or the Microsoft account to log into the application. You'd wanna build up the UI a bit more obviously and make that more robust. Also the prompt engineering, you probably wanna make that more complex to add more value there. I was also thinking an app like this if it had Midjourney integration, because Midjourney doesn't have an API right now, but when they do, if you did introduce that, and then you got a logo back for the product, that'd be pretty cool. But I mean, it's almost infinite possibilities. That's what's so cool about what's going on with AI right now. There's just so much stuff you can build. The hard part sometimes is just figuring out which one to focus on. And if you're interested in building with AI, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're having an amazing day, and I'll talk to you in the next one.